everyone and welcome back to my channel. Make sure you press the subscribe button to my videos to see more from me. I talk about how to find jobs, how to find a PhD, how to progress in your career and just how to become better in general in terms of your lifestyle and success. So in today's video I'm going to be talking about how to find a job. Now this is a bit different to what I usually do in terms of education but I know that I have lots of people that are following me that have graduated already and are looking for jobs or some of you I know are in your final year of university and are going to start to look for jobs very soon so I thought this is a good video in order to show you some ways and talk about some ways that you can find jobs apart from simply searching on job websites. There are so many more efficient ways of finding a job than simply going to job websites and applying to loads and loads of jobs without much success. In today's video I'm going to be talking about six different ways that you can look for a job that hopefully will bring you more success than what you've been doing so far. So the first method is by using LinkedIn. So I'm sure lots of you have heard of LinkedIn before. It is a kind of career networking platform, a bit like a social media platform except it's strictly professional um, and you upload your profile with a photo, it's a bit like an online CV. So you have a profile, you have all your information, everything relevant to your career and your aspirations, you'd upload that to LinkedIn. I myself have a LinkedIn profile, I know that loads of you guys have found me on there and have connected with me so <laughs> thanks if you have already. It's a lovely way for people to find you without even trying. Now I've got my profile on there which by the way is not updated, I am still a PhD student on LinkedIn um, but people have emailed me, recruiters have emailed me offering me a job and they've job hunted me. Um, I've had an email from a consultancy agency, I've had an email from a private school agency asking me to teach in a private school um, and pretty good, pretty good options that I've seen so far. What recruiters do would be to go on there and search for people that have the kind of qualifications that they are looking for or they might find someone and then kind of go through that person and find people that are similar to that person. Let's say you're looking for a job at a specific company, you can find someone that works at that company and send them a kind email asking them for more information or asking them to meet up for some coffee or some drinks and you never know, someone might say yes, I know my friend did that when she was looking for a consultancy job, met up with some people that she spoke to on LinkedIn and she now is working as a consultant. So um, I think it's a great way of finding jobs, being headhunted and kind of putting yourself out there and saying I want a job, these are my interests. So I've just picked up my phone to take a look at my LinkedIn profile and um, like I said it is very old, I haven't updated it yet, I'm still a PhD candidate at UCL. <laughs> but um, I've got approximately 400 connections uh, which doesn't really matter, that's not that big of a deal. The second method is to sign up to a recruitment agency. Now these are totally free for you as a candidate, but again I feel like this is another very very underrated method of finding a job. I found that whenever I've heard of anyone else that has applied through an agency, they've been getting interviews left, right and centre. So essentially an agency is a firm that's hired by a company in order to help them with their staffing issues. It kind of cuts their labour a little bit. Um, so the agency, their job is to find you a job. That is their job and you don't pay them anything as a candidate. They do make some money but they make money from your employer, not from you. So you don't lose out at all. Your salary will still be your salary which is quite a nice thing. And also you will be an employee of your employer, not of the agency. So what you do is you upload your CV to an agency and they will contact you and send you job descriptions and help you find a job whenever one comes up that, you, that is relevant to you. They have a very wide scope uh, of, of knowledge so they might be able to find you a job different to what you may ha may be looking for uh, because you, you're probably quite pigeonholed, you're probably only looking in kind of one direction but they will look at your skills and say actually you know what you would be really well suited in this position, you would work really well in that position and um, I think that's I think it's amazing, it's kind of a middleman, it's kind of someone that's helping you, helping the company um, and their job is to find you a job. The agency is also able to kind of like negotiate Negotiate your salary a little bit for you. Um, so yeah, I, I think overall it's quite a nice way to start and kind of get your foot onto the ladder, especially if you've just graduated or you want to change jobs but you're still in the early stages of your career. I think it's quite a nice way of, uh, of, of progressing uh, in the career. The third way is by looking at some popular job websites. Now, the ones I found are the best are Guardian Jobs and Indeed.com. Again, I'll leave the links for both of these in the description bar below. And again, it acts a bit like 
what I mentioned earlier as like an agency. The nice thing about this is that it's not a specific person per se, but you will get job descriptions quite often, maybe every day, every other day, for jobs that have similar keywords to what you are looking for. The number of jobs that you can find on the Guardian website is insane, like it blows my mind when I see positions that I didn't even think existed. Um, and it also gives you the salary, the location, so you can filter it internationally. So even if you are living or working in the Middle East, in Asia, in Africa, you can find a job on the Guardian Jobs website regardless of kind of where you are in the world. I think it's a great kind of international website to be able to use. The fourth method of finding a job is using Twitter. I have got a Twitter account, I probably go on it like once every couple of days. But I find that Twitter has sort of two spheres. One sphere is very social, kind of just chatting about nonsense. But the second sphere that I find is very academic, very kind of career focused, career driven. In the Twitter search bar, you can search for the jobs that you're looking for in, the, in a hashtag. So for example, if I pick up my phone right now, for example, if you search find a PhD, and I'm scrolling down right now, I can see loads of PhD opportunities. So it's finding a PhD in environmental science, um, I can see looking for a PhD in bioinformatics, just loads of ooh, funded, so this person, this person says funded PhD student available to work for, with me next year, come here, um, loads of different offers actually, whoa, so many, I didn't expect so many, exciting PhD scholarships available, you can follow their links or you could even DM them, so if you feel like your profile, your Twitter profile is professional enough, which is something I need to stress so much, like Twitter can be used professionally, but it also can be used socially, I wouldn't recommend using it socially, I feel like you've got Instagram for that and the Snapchat for that, Twitter should be used professionally, I feel like that's the kind of platform that it is, I feel like that's the kind of platform that Twitter lends its hand to, so I would feel no way emailing a employer using my Twitter profile because I feel like it is professional. Send them a DM and say, hey, I'm really interested in this job offer, would love to apply, we'll be applying next week, and kind of close at that. Just so you've shown some interest, they are seeing you one-to-one, -one. they can see your profile, they can see who you are, hopefully that will be an advantage to you. The second way you can use Twitter is by following people that are relevant to your field. You can send a message and say, hey, I'm really interested to become a consultant. Uh, is there any way that we can chat? You never know what may happen after some time, after they get to know you, they may even recommend you to their employer. And that is a great way that you can get a first-hand recommendation um, in the perfect field that you want to be in. So that, that's definitely a way to connect with people on Twitter. The fifth way is by searching directly on the company uh, websites. So for example, if you want to work at UCL, let's say, go to UCL, at the bottom there's always a careers tab or a jobs tab. You can filter that through academic jobs, uh, HR jobs, IT jobs, etc, etc, and then find your uh, relevant jobs. Or if you want to work for, let's say, a bank, let's say you want to work for HSBC or NatWest or KPMG, go to their direct websites and look for the jobs on their website. I think it's quite useful to do that because they usually have FAQ sections, so frequently asked questions. So you can look in there and find out if there are more requirements that you won't necessarily see if you go through, let's say, Guardian Jobs, um, and it does give you more information about that company. So if you do end up getting an interview, I think it's a really good idea to make sure that you know lots about the brand, the company, the organization, and what better way to do that than looking at their website directly. The last way to find a job is kind of getting your foot in a little bit via internships or apprenticeships. It, these may be unpaid, so this is a great way to start if you are a student and you've got some time during your holidays. Definitely do an internship or an apprenticeship, which may pay you very little or nothing, but at least then you kind of get to know that department, you get to know that field, you get to know that sector, you also network. More times than not, I found that when people have done an internship or an apprenticeship somewhere, more times than not, they always end up with a full-time job, always. And companies love this because they know the person, they've trialled them for free almost. They know them, they know how they work, they know how they gel in the company, they know how they know that they've been able to train them a little bit. It's more economically friendly for them anyway to keep you on than to have to hire someone new. So if you can get your foot in by doing a six-week internship or a six-week apprenticeship and you can impress them, which isn't that hard to be honest, especially in this day and age, you can impress them, you're more than likely to end up with a full-time job with them. You're allowing yourself to have six weeks try it out, see if you like it, and you know what, you might actually hate it, so there's nothing lost there. 
I really hope this helped you in discovering different ways to find a job. Finding a job is not easy. Finding a job that gives you financial security, that makes you mentally happy and doesn't emotionally drain you is difficult. You need to spend time thinking about it, applying to lots of places, not giving up, keep on going. In the end, you will find your perfect job. Hopefully the different avenues that I mentioned today will help you in finding a job. And if it does, then let me know. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know if there are any other ways that you guys would recommend finding a job because I know there are probably loads that I haven't mentioned already and don't forget to follow me on my social media and I'll see you guys in a video tomorrow. Bye!